Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be having a look at the ship designs for the starting frigates, I guess you'd call them, for the four main races. And we're just going to be using the weapons that are available at the start of the game and looking at the various ship designs. So in front of you, we've got the various ship designs um, that these races start with. I've tried to tweak them to put the best possible weapons on here. So starting with the Federation, what I changed on here was I added a uh, power core to give us a bit more power. And then I added in a medium slot uh, a torpedo weapon here. Um, when I get in the actual game, I'll show you the uh, designs to add a bit more firepower to the Federation fleet. So, uh, actually I think I changed that to point defense as well. I'll check it in the game. I put point defense on here, like uh, I think the Cardassians, I think the Cardassians have a point defense as well on one of their ships. No, no they don't. Um, so let's look at the stats. So the Federation starts with a 900 hull the cost is 167 alloys, so it is, Federation ships are more expensive. Only 48 days to build though. So they do have reasonable damage, speed 161. Uh, officers takes 130, so the Federation ships normally have more, more officers to crew them. So let's have a look at the Cardassians. The Cardassians have 159 alloy cost, so nearly the same as the Federation but significantly longer build time at 128 days. So that's, uh, that's nearly three times longer, to be honest. But they have more hull points, 125 hull points, and that's typical of Cardassian designs. They normally had stronger hulled ships. The Federation is normally stronger with shields, but as we're at the start of the game, there are no shields at this technology level. And this is just a baseline test of the designs at the start of the game. We'll get into more testing um, later on with uh, more advanced designs for other videos, so we can see their speed, they are significantly faster than Federation ships as well. Damage, uh, overall is a little bit less, but the Cardassians do have a Civic, which I'll show you, which gives them a 20% damage boost. And they're the only race that starts with an actual damage boost to their fleets at the start of the game. So 130 officers, so they're the same as the Federation overall. Then we've got the Klingons. The Klingons, Bird of Prey, quite cheap to build, 88 alloys. 128 days to build, so it does take a long time, although it's cheap to build. Hull points is only 400, so you can see there that you'd need two and a half of these to match one Cardassian ship in terms of hull points, and at least two and a bit for the Federation ships. In terms of damage, quite powerful, quite strong. Speed, about the same as the Federation ships, Miranda class. Damage is um, not too bad. It's got high firepower for what you'd expect of a Klingon ship. Officers is 90, so significantly less. That's 40 officers less per starting ship than the Cardassians or the Federation. So we expect the Klingons to field higher numbers of each ship. The Romulans. The Romulans have 109 alloys, so a bit more expensive than the Klingons, but a very cheap, um, quick build speed like the Federation. Their hull point is only 350 though, so quite weak hull. Although they do have good firepower for their size, and as the game goes on, the Romulans do get um, more powerful weapons. They tend to have that high alpha strike surprise attack with their cloak compared to other species. Klingons have higher attack value per ship. Uh, the Cardassians are more um, stronger hulled and good firepower, and the Federation are a mix of strong shields Pretty decent hull and average type weapons. You can see there are 110 officers, so a bit cheaper. The speed is quite fast as well, not as fast as the Cardassian ship, but they're faster than Klingons or the uh, Federation ships. So you could could use speed to your advantage as well, as they uh, along with the Cardassians. So overall, you'd probably expect the Cardass, uh, not the Cardass, the Romulans and the Klingons would need greater numbers of ships to beat the Cardassians and Federation simply due to their hull points. And the damage, at least at the start of the game, is not significantly more. It's only slightly more than Cardassians. It's less than the Federation. 
and uh, the Klingons. The Klingons got a little bit more higher damage, but it's not enough to make much of a difference. So you'd probably need you know, probably two to one uh, versus the Federation or Klingons, uh, Federation or Cardassians. And with the officers, that makes it quite hard in the game. Um, 90 and 110, you'd probably want the officer cost to be down a bit lower, I think, for balance reasons. Because if you, if you look at the, the stat-wise, the damage is just not high enough to get through this extra hull. So, it, and especially with the Kardashians, have got their uh, attack bonus. So the, the uh, Klingons and Romulans, I think, are at a bit of a disadvantage earlier in the game compared to the Kardashians and the Federation. Now, we'll have a look at um, uh, the a couple of civics that each empire starts with. Okay, so here we can see the Kardashian civic that they start with raider corpse which gives a 20 percent damage to the hideki class ship which is your starting frigate class ship so that's really nice and then you get uh, bonuses to the other ship classes as they appear plus you get a tracking bonus which is nice for things like um, missiles for example or torpedoes that'll help you hit more often the klingons they get warriors honor which gives ship evasion 10 percent ship tracking 10 percent and minus 10% ship build cost. So that will also be quite good. They'll get hit less, they'll be able to hit more often, and it's cheaper to build their ships. So overall, these are the two civics that affect ships. The Klingons do have another one there which affects our armies. So that's not too bad for those races anyway. So let's have a look at how some of these combat situations will pan out. Now, do keep in mind, I'm going to do a base test of 10 versus 10 ships. So, and that's just to give you an idea and show you that 10 versus 10 for some of the races is quite even and some of the others is not. And it gives you an idea of the numbers that you will need to beat these other races in the early parts of the game. And that's what I was saying, you probably need 2 to 1 or maybe 1.5 to 1 something around those kind of levels to be able to fight evenly with some of the uh, one versus one battles that will go on. So let's um, let's have a look at some uh, combat testing. Okay, so here we've got a Federation fleet of 10 Miranda class ships versus a Klingon fleet of 10 Birds of Prey. Now we can see here that the Federation has significantly more firepower at 841 versus 576 for 10 ships each. And that's what I was saying. I think you need some more birds of prey to even up these numbers. Another probably three, four, perhaps even five to match the Federation fleet because they've got a lot more hull points and in terms of firepower as well. So let's look at the uh, ship design. So we've got medium burst phases and a medium plasma charge, two medium plasma charges. So they do start with uh, more medium weapons, which does higher damage per ship than a Federation ship. But they don't start with any ability to put a auxiliary slots or extra armor or shields or things like that. This is just a very basic uh, warship. Cheap and nasty, as they'd say. Okay, the Federation Miranda class. So what I added in was, like I said before, was a uh, power generator, which added 20 power, which enabled me to put on this uh, extra medium plasma charge, which is vacant when you start the game. I also changed it to a point defense for, for the middle slot, because the Federation starts with three small slots, so you might as well put one point defense on to try and shoot down some of the uh, missiles and torpedoes and stuff that come your way. Because if you try and put on another, uh, say, plasma charge, you don't have enough power. And the only other thing you can do is put on a uh, phaser cannons and stuff. But as they do damage to shields, and no one really has shields and a big, big negative modified hull, I don't see much point of putting on these extra burst phases for hull damage when you can put on these point defense for quite cheap and they add quite a bit of firepower so if you see if you went up to um, from 13.79 to 16.06 now now in Stellaris when point defense has no missiles that shoot at they do fire at the enemy ships and you can see there you get uh, two shots per second 75% accuracy, 10% tracking, range is only 30, so you've got to be quite close. So 
that's what I put on the uh, Federation ships. So it gives them more firepower. And that's about the best you can do with the Federation ships. And let's see how this battle pans out. Here we go. First volley is coming. They fight about the same time. You can see both sides taking significant damage. See the Klingons just getting hammered in that first volley, and that's due to their lower hull points. If we have a look, we just pause it here. You can see their ships hull. Look at that 47 to 400, 179 to 400, 94 to 400. There's only a few Klingon ships which haven't been destroyed. See, these guys got destroyed in the opening volley. Ouch. And how's the Federation fleet doing? They lost one ship so far. We have a bit of damage to some of the Mirandas. You can see they've got significantly more hull points. That one's suffering. 600 or 900. So you can see there how the Klingons are going to need more ships per fleet. You're going to see the firepower going down for so six versus nine at the moment. You can see the point defenses there working as well. Down to five. We'll just speed this up a little bit. Don't expect the Klingons to do much more. They're too, too outgunned. You'd be retreating. There's no admirals in these battles either. Okay, so we've won that battle. Let's have a look. So the Federation lost one Miranda class. The Birds of Prey lost nine. So you can see how out of whack that is. There's probably a little bit of balancing, I think, that needs to happen um, between these. Um, maybe in terms, maybe not in terms of the damage and, and such, but maybe in the, the cost to build them. You want to, you can see there that you, you probably need at least another five Birds of Prey to be competitive against the Federation fleet, perhaps more. So, but to build those extra five ships um, would not uh, really be cost effective if you look at the cost of the, that's 165. I guess it's, what, what was it, 88 for the Klingons. Let's just have a quick look. Let's look at the Klingons. So it's 68 actually. Mm. So it's quite cheap. So that's it. If that ten percent bonus, I guess, the cheaper takes long, long time to build those. It's, it's surprising, isn't it? Klingons have got these cheap warships, but they, they take longer to build than the Federation ships, which have much more hull points and are more expensive. That doesn't really make sense to me. That should be that you know, like some maybe thirty days or something should be really cheap and nasty. So yeah, so you can see that this is significantly cheaper. So a true test would probably be. Uh, 20 birds of prey versus 10 Mirandas. That's what I would think. And I'll probably look at that at another video. This is just to get a baseline um, and give us ideas on where the starting ships stand of each other. And I don't wanna make this video too long. So we'll look at that in the, in the near future. So Klingon players, just keep that in mind when you're fighting the Federation early. All right, let's move on to our next battle. For this fight, we've got Federation versus the Cardassians. And you can see straight away in the firepower, it's a lot more even, but still with an advantage to the Cardassians. And this is 10 ships versus 10 ships, 10 versus 10. So the Mirandas are exactly the same design we had previously with this design. Nothing's changed. Now the Cardassians, I'll just bring up their ship design. So you can see the Kardashians, I did put the point defense on because that will intercept um, a lot of lasers, uh, a lot of missiles and things like that. And I don't, I think it was too expensive in terms of power. Although I could add in a power module and make that there. But it's 11.11 .11 versus putting point defense on. You get a little bit more firepower. And I think that's far more versatile considering most of the weapons, offensive weapons people have at this stage uh, like plasma charge weapons, 
And you can see there it's a missile, eight hull points. So having point defense is seems worthwhile when the biggest weapon to do damage to hull is plasma or missile torpedo based weapons. So we'll stick with that design. That's the design we've got. You can see the cost is 102 alloys, significantly cheaper than Federation ships. Take a lot longer time to build once again. That's uh, 10 less officers, so, and a bit uh, less firepower as well, but more hull points. And the Cardassians have that 20% um, attack bonus as well. So are we currently at war? Yes, we are. All right, so we've got our battle between the Federation and uh, Cardassians here. Let's have a look at the Federation ship design. It is the same as our previous battle, no changes at all. Our Cardassians they have a similar design. They've got point defense two plasma charges so they don't have as much firepower as the federation fleet due to less slots here uh, but they do have more hull points they have a higher hit chance as well less officers for the ship cheaper ships to build although more time to build them S faster speed which will translate into higher evasion as well and that's a Cardassian ship so let's see how uh, this battle will pan out. So is it? Oh, they retreated. Come on. All right, let's see how this battle goes. See both fleets firing away there. Confederation got up a good opening volley. Probably due to their more numerous weapons. The point defense working like crazy. Confederation taking quite a few losses there. Although they started off uh, relatively even, although they seem to lost two ships now. So their fleet numbers have dropped. And that's probably due to the Federation having more actual firepower. But you can see their numbers are dropping. Look at their crew dropping quick. And that's, I'll just slow this down a little. And that's probably due to the fact the Cardassians have more hull points uh, and that higher speed, higher evasion. So they will um, take less shots overall. And they've got the, also the bonuses to um, evade a chance to hit as well. Oh, we've lost three three ships now. Set seven apiece at the moment. But you can see we've Federation's at a clear disadvantage now. He'd probably be getting out of this fight. He's not gonna win now. And you're just taking a lot of crew losses, so you probably want to have a few more Mirandas to be able to do with the Cardassians. If you can see there now, the battle is well and truly done. All right. That's stuck at two points there. Let's retreat and let's look at the stats. So the Federation, we did about, what's that, for nearly about 5,000, a bit over 5,000 damage there. Damage to hull and shields, damage to hull overall. Damage to officers, which is quite a lot. We only intercepted 27 missiles that time. Mm, that's pretty poor. That's the hit ratio and evasion 28%, which is quite low. When you look at evasion of the Kardashians, 44%. The hit ratio is higher as well. Look at that explosive hit point, 75% versus 44. 
They intercepted 33 missiles versus our 27, so they also shot more down. Not as much officer losses. Damage to hull. Look at that. 7,885. Ouch. Small plasma, phaser point defense. Look at the damage. Oof. That was nasty. So you can see there how the Cardassians have a good advantage in the early part of the game. All right, let's move on to the Romulan designs for the Federation as we've used for the previous battles. For the Romulans, Unfortunately for Romulans, they only need to start with two weapon slots, although quite powerful for only having two, but not much hull points at all, so they're quite weak on the hull. So they're going to be quite vulnerable to Alpha Strike. So this is where um, cloaking would come into it, to so try and give the Romulans uh, positional advantage if they can get it and try and get an opening alpha strike on the enemy fleet because it's really important they get the first shot in because if they get the second shot in <laughs> there might not be much of them left all right so yeah keep that in mind all right let's gauge this battle all right let's see how this fight goes Now the Federation Alpha Strike should be pretty devastating for the Romulans. Look at that salvo go. Oof, four ships lost, bang. And there you can see the remnants just there. Ouch. And you can see, look at their hull points. Less than half already. And that's because, oh, 17, 113. Yeah, they have been decimated, the Romulans, yeah. See, that's where the Romulans, look at this, the bar's way over this side. The Romulans need to get the first shot in. The Federation is barely scratched. Let's just slow this down. It's going to be a quick battle, I think. See, and the Federation got so much point defense that a lot of the, they'll be intercepting a lot of those missiles as well. Because the Romulans have only got the, the bigger slot weapons. So that means they probably have less of them, which means the point defense can focus fire on those bigger shots for a lot of them. Federation yet to lose a ship. The Romulans down five. Most of their fleet's gone. So if you're a Romulan player, you're going to need to bring two to one um, advantage until at least you get cloak and, and better ships. So you can see there how one-sided it was. It's just Federation fleet's barely scratched. All right, so the Federation fleet did, uh, what's that, about uh, 4.7 4. damage there. More damage there. Don't worry about that. They shot down nine missiles overall, so not that much really. But they probably, the firing rate, they lost so many ships early that their fire rate's slower for those um, uh, bigger slot weapons. Hit ratio. Evasion, 19%. So the Romulans had 39% evasion, which was good because of their higher speed. Hit ratio, nice hit ratio when they did actually fire, but just didn't have enough of it. No point defense, no shield, sorry about. Damage to officers, they didn't really do much at all. Damage to hull, look at that, hardly anything. Yeah, hardly anything. So you're gonna need, Romulan players, you're gonna need a lot more ships. Let's look at the ship cost again for the Romulans. Just so we can double check. So Romulan ship cost is 87. So yeah, significantly cheaper. You can build, should be able to build at least in terms of alloys two to one for the Federation. You also have a low um, build time. So you can build quite a lot of ships, even much faster than the Klingons even. Klingons have got a bit cheaper ships, about 20 alloys, but three times the build speed. You, problem is the officers, make sure you build lots of buildings to get the officers, because you do need quite a lot of officers for your uh, low hull points and lower firepower. So numbers is gonna be your advantage until you can get better ships and cloak and have more surprise with some better, better alpha strike weapons versus the Federation of Cardassians. So 
Romulan players, you probably don't want to mess with the Cardassians or Romul uh, Federation early. Uh, unless you can get big numbers advantage over them. All right, so I think that summarizes it up pretty well. The Cardassians obviously have the best advantage. Federation is not too bad. They, they're quite, um, quite, uh, I, I guess, a uh, middle type uh, ship design, which would which suits, suits them overall. Klingons, you just need numbers as well as the Romulans, which I guess would suit those uh, aggressive type players as well. Cheap ships, strong with a surprise attack. You can have cloak on both. Even the Cardassians can get cloak apparently. So build lots more ships, two to one for the Romulans and Klingons versus Federation and Cardassians, at least with these starting type of ships if you happen to get an engagement with them. So, and you should be able to have a numbers advantage because the ships for the Federation Cardassians are significantly more expensive. Um, although the Romulans, make sure you have more officers, keep your officers uh, going because you need more officers even though your ships are cheap and quick to build. All right, guys, give me some comments, some feedback. We'll um, do some more videos. Give me some comments on what type of testing you want to see because um, I will be progressing uh, to other ship designs and um, I will do like Klingons versus Romulans, Cardassians versus Romulans. I'll do that in another video. All right, hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.